Where are you fighting God for control in your life right now? If, if you're like me, if you're like most of us, there's, there's an area or two at least where we're still fighting for God, with God for control. It may be that God's calling you to let go of something. Maybe it's something bad. Maybe there's a sin in your life that God's calling you to let go. Maybe it's something good that that you're holding on to, and he says, I've got something better for you, but you're going to have to trust me. You're going to have to let me rule. And, And we're fighting him for control. And so when we have those places in our lives where we're fighting God for control, we have to learn to let go and trust him. If we want to step into the future that God has for us at at any age, we also have to be willing to let something go. A lot of times this just means letting go of our strong desire to be in control. It's not easy. We honestly think we know what is best for us. We know the plans that we have and, and, and we'll, we'll submit them to God and we'll say, God, this is what's best for me. And I'm going to ask you to, to bless this. And I'm going to ask you to, to lead me in this, but we have to be willing to let go of our plans and just ask God to, to lead us into his future. It doesn't mean we don't plan. It doesn't mean we don't think strategically. It doesn't mean we don't use our wisdom and judgment to move into the future. It's just we have to be willing to humble ourselves before God and ask God to direct our steps instead of asking God to bless the steps we want to take. You see, when I was in control, at times I made a mess of my life. But when I trusted God... What I have found is that God was faithful. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven says, for we live by faith, not by sight. We, we, wanna, we wanna live that way. We, we wanna follow it. We, we, we wanna trust it. But the reality is that more often than not, we, we wanna really live by sight and not by faith. But if we're willing to let go of that sight, then there are they're blessings of faith that come to us, but it's, it's a struggle. We have to let go of our need to be in control, let go of, of what we can see. Because you never see all that God is doing when you're looking at it. You only see that peace that he wants to show you right now. You say, why won't you show me the whole thing? So that you learn to walk by faith and not by sight. You know, as followers of Jesus, I, and I think a lot of us, we know that God's in control in our heads, right? The problem is sometimes there's a gap between what we know in our heads and what we feel in our hearts, our ability to relax into that knowledge that God's in control. And so, so the question that we need to ask ourselves is this, how can we move our trust in God from our heads to our hearts? Listen to me. You want to move your trust from God from your head and into your heart? You want to go from what we we know to be true, that God's in control, to really feeling it? Here's what we need to focus on. We know God's in control because he turns obstacles into opportunities. He turns obstacles into opportunities. Those things that look like they're opposing his will, he uses to accomplish it. We see that throughout scripture. These things might have looked like obstacles to God's will, but the reality is he's turned them into opportunities to do even greater things. Listen to me. We know that God's in control because he turns obstacles into opportunities. Because listen, church, the only safe way through chaos is trusting the only one who has true control. It's the only way through chaos when it comes calling. It's trusting the only one who really has control. We have an illusion of control. We think, well, I could do this, I could do that, I could get control of things. But the reality is we're spitting into the wind. We don't have any real control. And the people we look to, well, maybe they can control. No, they they don't have that ability. Only God has true control. And only God can control you in a way that blesses you. The only way through chaos, the only safe way through chaos is trusting the only one who has true control. So I wonder today, how is God calling you to trust him? Where is God calling you to stop 
fighting him for control. Our control issues can turn even our greatest blessings toxic. Our attempt to control our kids can drive our kids away. Our attempt to control our our spouse can end up creating a wedge between us so the marriage just fragments and it turns into something we never dreamed it would look like. Our attempts to control other people spoils the relationships. Listen, control issues can turn even our greatest blessings toxic control issues. They're stirred up by that fear of losing the blessing because here's the thing. Listen, fear is rocket fuel for control issues. This is one of the big places that our control issues come from. They come from fear of losing something that we've come to cherish, something that we've come to depend on, something that God has blessed us with. And I think this is actually very helpful in our own lives. It's also helpful as we look at other people. You might be in a relationship with somebody that feels pretty controlling. And and it's easy to think, well, they're controlling because they're just bad people. But the reality is fear is rocket fuel for our control issues. And it may very well be that the people who are trying to control you are actually people who are afraid of losing you. And you're like, well, this is a terrible way to show it. Yeah, I didn't say it was a good idea. But it's a very common issue because when chaos comes calling or when we think chaos might come calling, when, when we might lose a blessing, our control issues get stirred up. They get triggered, right? Fear is rocket fuel for our control issues. And, and I wonder, is, is there a blessing you're afraid of losing that's fueling your control issues? Is there something God has blessed you with? And there's a fear inside you that that you might somehow lose it and that's driving you to try to control it or to control them. But what's the alternative? The alternative is trust. The alternative is trusting the only one who has true control because God's greatest blessings can't be seized. They can't be taken through control. They can only be received in a posture of trust. Because again, the blessings of God aren't rewards, they're gifts. 